Alfred Hitchcock was a master for the genre of mystery and horror. But at least according to film critic Roger Ebert, he had held a deep and abiding fear himself that one day he would become a victim in his own nightmare, standing accused of some heinous crime that he had not even committed. Apparently the fear that drove the production of the 1951 film classic starring Farley Granger and Robert Walker, Strangers on a Train. A macabre tale of two complete strangers who of course met on a train in which they decided to materially exchange murders, crisscross, so that each might have the perfect alibi. The strangers on a train. All aboard, this train is now departing the station. They say the troubles between two little people in this world don't matter to a hill of beans. Here's looking at you, kid. Me? You might say I'm kind of a private eye. You regular ace diamond type detective. Maybe I'm another cold blooded killer, a lecherous liar, and a thief. A case international and domestic terrorist. Drug dealer, spy, small time, big time thief, cheats, and even plagiarist. Now something you're not committing. Another long, sordid, hard, down on your luck story. So far down, you've been down looked up. I just above the scratch line, scratching where you don't itch and laughing where you aren't even tickled. But you know, into loving, I guess. And it was an honest word. But then, out of nowhere, we got hit with a virus. The snow was silent and spread unchecked. Denials for days, weeks, and months led to more deaths, more infections, more stress, and more loneliness. I hadn't worked for months. Bit of a dry spill. And Pan Am was the kind of town where they spelled trouble, T-R-U-B-I-L-L. And if you try to correct them, they'll kill you. And then talk about your mother. That's just like it. It's what it is. J La B is a Frenchy saying. But when your head says one thing and your whole life says another, your head always loses. That's how it all began. You play it for her, she'll play it for me. Play it against you. This is an American agent who actually I begin. Well, I'm beginning perhaps. Uh, from February 16th to 24th, 2020, the World Health Organization had dispatched to China a joint mission investigative team consisting of some 1,800 teams of at least five epidemiologists, approximately the manpower of two military maneuver brigades, drawn from 25 national and international experts from China, Germany, Japan, Korea, Nigeria, Russia, Singapore, and the World Health Organization, and even the United States of America. Which, contrary to some claims about a failure to get investigators on the ground in the early months of the outbreak, you should agree had been a pretty robust investigative effort. With boots on ground and eyes on the objective, as you yanks say. And they had dispatched with earnest to the vicinity of Wuhan and the surrounding Wuhan province. The source of the outbreak that had been announced by Beijing officials to the world on New Year's Eve 2019. Based upon the information available at the time, you see, it had been determined that on 30 December 2019, three bronchoalveolar lavage samples were collected from a patient with pneumonia of an unknown ideology. Quite singular. A surveillance definition established following the SARS outbreak of 2002-2003 they had been monitoring in Wuhan, Jinyan Tan Hospital, the very first of what had been then a total of 27 reported cases to be presented for a more thorough examination. And at the early point in what would become a global public health crisis, real time PCR assays on these samples were positive for pan beta coronavirus, positively identifying the cause 
uh, stemming from a coronavirus, the seven to infect humans, specifically better coronavirus to be lineage. However, alignment of the full-length genome sequence of the COVID-19 virus and other available genomes of better coronavirus showed the closest relationship was with the bat SARS-like coronavirus strain bat COB rat G13 identity 96%. This particular coronavirus, you know, is quite exclusive in infection through a most particular horseshoe at reservoir uh, that is uh, Ronopolis Apennis, which circulates in the vicinity of the Yunnan province almost exclusively over a thousand miles away from Wuhan. I mean, location not right where scientists have concluded that not just one, but two lineage strains, A and B, had arrived from Yunnan simultaneously between November and December 2019. After going through what may have been multiple spillover events through intermediary species before infecting what had become, according to scientists, an intermediary source for spillover to a human resulting in a pandemic that today has been attributed to over 7 million fatalities worldwide. Quite a sort of pound, all fatalities in the Holocaust in half the time. Ah, yes, indeed, but this is where the story really starts to get most interesting. Well, this incredibly contagious virus that has found, on a per capita basis, your American leadership in a most notorious way having done far worse than virtually every other country in the world. As I said, there's no reason that a rich country like you should have approaching 1.2 million deaths. Indicative that something, something clearly has gone wrong, even if still we don't know exactly what that was. Or say we don't. And this story gets even more stranger on the train. By January 14, 2020, there were only a total of 41 reported cases in China, with not even one fatality occurring until January 10, 2020, just four days before. And yet, from January 26 through February 10th, 2020, Around the time of the first reported case of COVID-19 had been identified in the U.S., an outbreak of 2019 novel coronavirus, COVID-19, affected 10 persons from three different families, which was reported in the case study by the CDC and published in Emerging Infectious Diseases Journal in July 2020. You know what that is? That's a shot. And I know what a shock is because I see one up close. And you better do something about this one because I don't intend to go through that hell again. These 10 persons had eaten at the same air-conditioned restaurant in Guangzhou, China. One of the families had just traveled from Wuhan, Wabai province, China. And on January 23rd, 2020, the index case, our mysterious Mr. Wu, who we shall refer to, as the mysterious Mr. Wu, most appropriately, your person to have been infected with the COVID-19 virus disease, along with three other members of his family. This infected person would later make history, very intriguing history, blamed for a limited super spreader on his second floor dining room at a restaurant in Guangzhou, stimulating a call to revise the primary transmission model for COVID-19 from droplets to aerosols or very fine particles. On January 24th, the following day, the mysterious Mr. Wu had presumably departed the hotel and decided to eat lunch at a restaurant with three other family members in his traveling party, remaining there long enough to overlap a period of 52 minutes for the two parties dining and seated to his phone and spanning some 73 minutes overlapping with the party of three dining to his out. Total of three families all within an area in the back corner measuring some 30 square meters. Almost immediately after the party, the restaurant, dining room, however, 
which had been located on the third floor of a five-story building, not the second, with dimensions spanning some 145 meters, a total of 15 tables, each space just one meter apart, with 83 patrons inside. This mysterious Mr. Wu had developed critical symptoms of fever, occasioned by asymptomatic presentations that included coughing requiring hospitalization, where he had been confirmed as having been infected with COVID-19, an infection by timeline he could only have acquired in Wuhan before commencing his 614-mile journey by train to Guangzhou. The other nine persons, limited to that 30-square-meter area, the effective range of a smoke an aid magician would eventually test positive, all requiring hospitalization regardless of age. Age 20 to 84, without discrimination. The other 73 patrons had been identified as close contacts and quarantined for 14 days. However, no, not even one developed symptoms later. None tested positive on PCR tests or throat swabs by reverse transcription. Even more intriguing than this case involving what has been described in multiple peer-reviewed scientific reports as rather intriguingly self-limiting as a super spreader is what had happened before that occurrence aboard the train journey of the index case our mysterious Mr. Wu. Traversing the distance of over 614 miles from a major railway hub for the central mainland in Wuhan on the Yangtze River, the Detroit motor capital of China, the Guangzhou the capital of Guangdong, or for those romanticists, the location most often referred to as Canton. Compared to a super spreader, that appears to defy computational fluid dynamics. What on earth could be even stranger on a train? Wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. Before we get to this train, let's get a good picture, a good look at uh, what's going on in Wuhan for our mysterious Mr. Wu decides to pack up his family and head off on vacation during a pandemic in the making. What's that date? January 23rd, 2020. That's the same day that Hubei province decided to implement sweeping lockdowns. And our index case grabs his family, hops on a train, and decides to take a long trip to just go to lunch. What's not right with this picture? I can't quite speak to how our mysterious Mr. Wu, the focus of this peer review study and star of our drama, had managed to somehow you know, escape. However, although I know it appears quite odd in retrospect, looking at the pandemic, we have a lot of science right now. But pandemics are quite historically times associated with fear, confusion, hopelessness, despair. That is the early advantage of any outbreak and pattern. And this virus isn't stupid, but what we really can't predict is human behavior. Human behavior just plainly doesn't serve us very well in times like these. As late as March, we still had travelers exploring the world on cruise ships, recording contemporaneous reflections in their travel blogs, posting about closed ports that had interrupted their travel itineraries, quite inconvenienced by a pandemic, but looking forward to adding unexpected destinations to grab stamps for their passports that they hadn't expected. Quite possible in reflection, but evolutionary pressure of a pandemic most often takes quite some time, even for rational human beings. Sadly, we are battling with one another and not battling with the common foe, which is the virus itself. Wait, 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 wait. Wait a minute. This mysterious Mr. Wu is like Patrick Dempsey in the movie Outbreak. Not on a bus in California and headed for Cedar Creek, but to the Guangdong province from Hubei province in China still infected with the highly contagious disease, not quite the Mataba virus, some biological weapon that DOD had manufactured, but with COVID-19, which everybody tells us has naturally evolved. He may not be sweating like a pig, but maybe he's still coughing all over everyone around him. 
including the three members of his family he decided to grab out of Wuhan and take a little vacation the day that they were locking down, with whom they somehow escaped on a train that was still running on the day they instituted the travel ban. Why didn't they close the station if they had a travel ban? He gets up on the train and all of this shedding viral load acts like Will Smith at the Oscars politely departing their seats in the audience, saying excuse me along the way and proceeding behind them, all lined up single file in his final destination in Guangzhou. That doesn't even make any sense. Hold on. January 23rd. A mysterious Mr. Wu departs Wuhan on the train on January 23rd. In just a week, the WHO would be declaring a public health emergency of international concern, PHEIC. That 41 cases in China reported by January 14th would be exponentially increased to 9,720 cases. Confirmed cases alone in China and 9,826 in other places in the world. In 18 other countries, attributed 213 deaths, 106 outside of China. By that time, still, a total of only six deaths had been reported from Wuhan City. So one could reasonably make the argument that our mysterious Mr. Wu had no reasonable apprehension to pee in his skirt about grave bodily harm and had not, if acting rationally, was not exactly running for his life. Okay, so let's say our mysterious Mr. Wu is just a bit lackadaisical and a man about town who decides in a public health crisis to just saunter over to the train station with three members of his family the day that city officials are locking down. Finds the train station still open, the train still running. 614 miles on the train. What is that? Like going from DC to Boston. That's a six and a half hour trip, maybe nine, depending upon stops. DC to Boston? And it's still less than 400 miles. You still got another 200 to go. How about uh, DC to Miami? That's a little over a thousand miles. About the distance between Yunnan, the location of the Horseshoe Battle Reservoir, to its final destination in Wuhan. Ma, you Yanks tend to be so provincial in perspective. China has a speed rail, a bullet train, just like Japan and Tokyo. This is just a four hour trip and quite affordable in fact, uh, as low as maybe even 26 American dollars per passenger. There are four stations in the vicinity of Wuhan. Hanku Railway Station is probably the busiest for traffic, and this tower is one of the four major railway hubs in China, strategically located at the crossway of the Beijing Ganzhou Railway Line, the Hanku Danjiang Ku Railway Line, and some other important railway lines. Every day, trains depart from Wuhan to almost every city inside the Hubei province, and Trains are available for getting to most major cities throughout China, like Beijing, Shanghai, Chengdu, Nanchang, and of course Guangzhou. There are over 70 trains departing on the station every day, and more than 120, 120 trains pass through there. Bullet trains are available between Wuhan and seven cities. By taking a bullet train, it only takes four hours to get to Guangzhou, four hours to Zhengzhou, and nine hours to Beijing. But still, being aboard a train for four hours with family is quite a little journey in a congregant setting if you are also infected with a lethal and highly contagious disease. And that is exactly why this is Stranger on the Train. Valley through. You have at least 750,000 commuters and passengers just traveling through Grand Central Station in Manhattan. Our mysterious Mr. Wu could have spread this virus just to just about every city in China, just in his visit to the Hanko railway station alone. But he didn't. You are a very smart man. 
I went to Knox School. And we had a special Knox School. And we learned all about coronaviruses. The WHO began publishing periodic situation reports on January 21st, just two days before the mysterious Mr. Who alights on a journey like Typhoid Mary aboard what could have been Agatha Christie's murder on the Orient Express, but somehow that had failed to occur. They published situation report number three, ironically, on the very same day that our Mr. Who and his mysterious antics had quite casually decided to leave town. By January 20th, 2020, National IHR Focal Point for Republic of Korea had just reported their very first case of novel coronavirus infection. And only 282 confirmed cases had been found in four countries, including China. 278 in China, two cases in Thailand, one case in Japan, and one case in the Republic of Korea. All exported cases have possessed a Wuhan travel history quite consistent with the early pattern of the virus, generally speaking. Among the 278 cases confirmed in China, 258 were reported from the Hubei province, 14 from Guangdong province, where our traveler was headed, five from Beijing municipality, and one from Shanghai municipality. Of the 278 confirmed cases, 51 cases are were reported as severely ill, or 18%, making them rather easy to identify and probably prompting them to go to a hospital. And 12, another 4%, were in critical condition. So, what is that? Um, 22% very, very identifiable cases that might want to go to a hospital. This message was approved by Major Mike Webb. Honest. This has been a Filmways presentation, darling. And y'all come back now. Yeah.